Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Washington, and now joining us from the McClatchy, D.C. Bureau is the managing editor of McClatchy, D.C., Mark Seibel. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So you've been covering the oil BP spill in the Gulf, right, more or less from the beginning. Uh, first of all, give us a quick update on what efforts are being made to actually stop this thing, and does anything look like it might be effective? Well, we're actually at a very dramatic moment right now because the Obama administration has given BP the go-ahead to take off the current containment cap. This is the one that's been on since June 3rd and is collecting about 15, 16,000 barrels of oil a day. Which is what percentage of what they think is coming out? Well, of? it's between 20 and 40 percent. Um, and it's been there since June 3rd. Well, they've given the permission to take it off and replace it with a new containment cap, which BP hopes, and the Obama administration as well, hopes will completely seal the well. Okay, now the risk is it doesn't work. They may have 100% coming out into the water. Well, they, what they will have for several days is an unimpeded flow of oil through what, where the containment cap used to be. Now, how much oil that is, we really don't know. Um, but we know that they won't be collecting the 16,000 they had been collecting, the 16,000 barrels per day. Uh, they will still be collecting oil through uh, the blowout preventer, um, maybe eight, ten thousand 10,000 barrels per day. But you know, the estimate of how much it's flowing is between 35 and 60,000, and some people think that's low too. So there is going to be unencumbered flow where the, the containment cap used to be. And what's taking so long to do this? Well, what they have to do, they lift the containment cap off, then they have to remove the pipe and some other uh, odds and ends that are sitting there. And that requires, they're working with robot vehicles, it'll probably take three or four days just to unbolt everything and get it out of the way. So what's the debate about this? Is it, is it, is it considered highly that it might not work? Otherwise, it seems a no-brainer that you would just do it. Well, the concern is, is a, a couple of, of items. Uh, the first item is, is, you know, the idea of intentionally allowing more oil than you have to allow to escape into the Gulf. And the second thing is, once they've put the cap in place, um, there will be uh, a contained system where the pressure will actually rise inside the well. And their concern, of course, is, is, is the integrity of the well bore, which they've always been concerned about. If the pressure is not high enough within the cap, then they believe what they will have seen is that the, well, the oil is leaking out into the sea rock uh, through some avenue they don't know. Um, if that happens, they will immediately begin what they call production of the well, meaning they will begin hooking up the ships again to capture oil coming out so they can allow as much oil to flow out of the pipe as possible and hopefully catch as much as, uh, of it as they can. Um, if, however, they are able to cap it and, and don't have any pressure difficulties and believe that the well bore is whole and performing the way it's supposed to be, then they will just continue with the relief wells and perhaps in a couple of weeks be again pouring heavy drilling mud into the well to stop it up permanently. So let's, for the sake of argument and hope, this works, the cap works. What about the status of what we've already got? The, how much oil is already in the water and what can they do about it? Well, that's a very good question, how much oil is already in the water. Well, it's millions and millions of, of uh, gallons of oil. Um, and of course, we don't know, really know what we can do about that. Now, what about the ships? This, uh, there's been a lot of talk about this big ship from Taiwan that's come that's supposed to be able to clean the water and there's other ships working. Is any of this going to seem to be effective? Well. The, they're doing some skimming, but it's, you know, the, the skimming has really done very little in terms of collecting oil. Uh, it has obviously not been able to stop oil from coming ashore in the Louisiana marshes or on the beaches of Mississippi and, and Alabama and Florida. Uh, plus, there is an unknown volume of oil that is probably dissolved uh, into the water itself. Uh, and they, they don't really have a good method for cleaning that up. That's oil that has become part of the environment and the impact it has, you know, will unfold over the next many years, um, but it will never be removed from the water. Now, some of the more draconian or apocalyptic predictions are that whole sections of the coastline become almost uninhabitable. Is this, does that seem to be true or people just don't know? Well, we don't know. I mean, one of the things, you know, it's been the last time there was a spill 
of this magnitude in the Gulf of Mexico was, was 30 years ago. Uh, and that spill actually was at a much lower volume and in a, a much shallower part of the Gulf. Uh, and the oil disappeared after uh, a few years. Uh, and, and uh, you know, you didn't have a generation-long impact from that, from that particular spill. This spill is different in that it's deeper. Uh, the, wa the oil has been able to dissolve more in the, in the water column in the Gulf waters uh, than previously. Um, and it's gone into some places like the Louisiana marshes that the other one did not. Um, and so they don't know what the long-term impact is because they've never really had an event like this previously. Now, in the, behind you, we have a map of all the various oil rigs in the Gulf. It's a, if I'm looking at it here, it's like over 3,300 active drill sites. Um, based on what your experience covering this now, is there such a thing as safe offshore drilling? Meaning, can you actually create a regulatory authority that stops this from happening? First of all, is that possible to have that set of regulations? And in today's political environment, can you actually get a regulatory authority that's effective? In other words, should it all just be shut down, or is there a way to manage this? Well, you know, you're really dealing with two, I think, distinct situations here. When you have shallow water drilling, um, and most of the oil uh, wells portrayed on the map behind me are, are drill sites that are within, um, they're in, in water of, of less than 500 feet depth. Um, and we actually know how to operate in those, on those waters pretty well. Uh, obviously there are accidents, uh, obviously it's unpleasant if you uh, want to be a tourist in the area, there's still tar balls and there's spills and there are all kinds of things that happen. And that's one of the reasons Florida, which is a tourist destination, has never allowed offshore drilling, uh, not even in shallow water. And then you have the second category, which is what we're dealing with now with the Deepwater Horizon, which is deep water drilling in, in uh, depths in excess of 5,000 feet, actually depths uh, more than 1,000 feet are considered deep water. We thought the oil companies had the technology to do that. And what we've learned is that they don't really. They have the technology to go in and punch the hole but if something goes wrong, they don't really have the technology to stop it, cap it, uh, collect it, uh, or intervene if it's a large spill at the surface level. I mean, you know, they've done all these plans, uh, and we've read all these plans, uh, that promise that we can skim, you know, 400,000 barrels a day and that sort of thing. Well, in this entire disaster, you know, only a fraction of the amount of oil they promised could be skimmed in a day has been skimmed in two months. Uh, so we just don't have the capabilities. We know in the, in the BP case that the engineers, everything they tried basically to kill the well didn't work. You know, they came in first with the big coffer dam containment dome that, that floated away because of hydrates. Um, they, they came in with the top kill and the junk shot that didn't work. Uh, because the pressures were such in the well, they were f fearful, frankly, of putting more stuff into it. Um, reasonable success in the current containment cap, it, but, you know, oil is still leaking out, but they did capture some, and now they're going to try this new cap. So where are we at? There was going to be a moratorium. The courts, if I understood it, overturned some of the moratorium. Well, where, I, where are we at on there's, this now? There's very little uh, exploratory drilling, and I think you know it's important for, for viewers to understand that there's exploratory drilling, which is what the Deepwater Horizon was. It was an exploration. It was prospecting. And there are only 33 prospectors in the Gulf of Mexico, and that was what was supposed to be stopped by the moratorium. There are another 4,000 offshore production platforms um, that are producing oil right now, but they're unaffected by the moratorium. That, that's oil that's and still going to be how many of them are in deep water? You know, I don't know the answer to that, um, uh, but most of them are shallow water. But it sounds like, from what you're saying, that if we don't have the technology to protect deep water accidents to, to guard against it or clean it up, then is the question not to close down deep water drilling? Well, I think un until there are regulations or until there is a belief that oil companies really do have a way to deal with a deep water blowout, um, that there's going to have to be much tighter regulation and maybe regulation to the point where you say, 
you know, you don't really have the technological capacity to undertake this well, and so it doesn't get approved. But right now, that's not really happening. Well, it isn't happening, and, you know, I think it won't happen until Congress has, is of a mind to do it. Uh, and I don't know that Congress will ever want to get that draconian with it. I mean, right now, um, you know, regulators are under a regime where they must act within 30 days on, a, on an application for an exploratory well. Well, 30 days is a very short period of time, especially if you actually have to read the, the uh, applications that they put in. And of course, so we, it's we know very now. very hard to do any real due diligence. Huh? Right. Well, we know now with, with uh, because we've started looking at the Deepwater Horizon documents and some of the other documents, that clearly regulators weren't reading them. They talked about protecting walruses in the Gulf of Mexico. Well, there are no walruses in the Gulf of Mexico. It was obviously something that someone had cut and paste, pasted from a a, uh, another application for the, for the Arctic region. Uh, but it didn't matter because nobody was going to read it anyway. They didn't have time to read it and they weren't of a mind to read it. And, and so until you can have a, a regulatory scheme where people are actually going to read these documents, think about whether they're accurate, and then think about whether the companies can perform the way they say they're going to perform. Um, you won't really have meaningful regulation. So as in finance reform, we get back to money and politics again. I think that's right. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.